So we're going to go ahead and get started. And if there's anybody else who is joining, um, I'll try to let them in. But if you know anybody who's like still planning on joining, just let me know. Um, and to answer your question, I'm going to be recording the session. So, okay. Um, just make sure welcome. Okay, cool. So today we're going to be doing a presentation about how you can create a video series for your chapter. Um, now, uh, my chapter of Montclair High School Democrats uh, created a video series called the Youth and Politics Series, uh, which we used to educate our town about um, our municipal candidates. So today we're going to be kind of talking about how that can work for you um, so that you can make your own video series. And we made our video series while we were on socially distancing so it's definitely possible to do it online you don't have to have be in person to create a video series so a little bit about me i'm maggie uh, i was recently elected president of the montclair high school democrats and outside of school um, i'm the director of in harmony montclair which is a nonprofit group run by teens and tweens and we organize benefit concerts and other events to raise money for charities and uh, as a part of that this summer we've been creating videos about um, about what's happening with our benefit concert because it's gonna be online this year. So the process that I'm gonna show you today can't, is not just used for like making videos that have to do with politics, but can also be used for making videos about other things. So it doesn't have to be political to use the process that I'm showing today. And I've also used uh, professional editing software for several years. Um, I've used it since like late elementary school. So I've had a lot of experience with editing and putting together videos. So everything I'm gonna be talking about today are things that I've used in the past, not just for this project. So a little bit about our series. Um, so it's called the Youth and Politics Series. Um, back in like January, February, we knew that our municipal election was coming up in May. And uh, where I live, Montclair, New Jersey, is very politically active, but not a lot of people vote in our municipal elections or are involved in our municipal politics. So we decided we wanted to have a forum so that we could educate people about uh, those who are running for office. But we had to change it once we moved to online school. And then that's when we were decided to make it a video series, um, partially because I've already had some video editing experience from the past. So it made sense that we would turn it into a video series online. Um, so we had an intro video which explains the series. And then we had um, videos about the candidates um, so that people could watch videos about specific, um, the specific election. So that's a little bit about our series. And also if you have any questions as I go through, feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, I might answer some of them as we go and other ones I'll answer at the end. So the purpose of today is to show that it's possible to create a video series while we're still socially distant and doing things online. Um, so this presentation is going to be focusing on like uh, one video and like our video series, but this whole process can be used for any of your own video projects inside or outside of DEMS. And another thing is that we're going to have a workshop tonight at 7 p.m. And we're actually going to go through this whole process and create our own video about like Summit and stuff like that. So if you're interested in being a part of that, that's tonight at 7 p.m. And we're going to go through everything and I'll do a demo of how to edit um, online and all of that. So these are a few sample video projects that you could do for your own chapter. Um, so you could do something like a promo video, um, videos about candidates, interviewing. One thing that we did that worked really well was for each question, we had one of our members um, uh, asking the question. So whenever some a candidate was asked about COVID-19, for example, we would have the same clip of one of our board members asking that question. And it'll make sense when I show you one of the videos later, um, but basically it was a great way to get more of our like board members involved with it as well. And there's many different possibilities. This is a few different things. And one thing to make sure you know is if you are doing videos about candidates, you have to be very specific about the guidelines you give them and be careful about editing any of their footage because if you edit some of their footage, it can come off as being a bias. So it's a bit harder when you're doing candidate videos because you just have to make sure that they send things correctly so that you don't edit it really, um, or else someone could say that you're biased in some way. 
And real quick, if you have like the little reactions, if you can give me a thumbs up if you have some video editing experience, I just, or like video experience, I'm trying to just suss out like where people are. Okay, cool. Um, and then you can put them down. And if, give me a thumbs up if this, you're coming from like no experience, you're just learning about it today. Okay. Sounds good. So we have a mix of uh, where people are at. So I'll definitely uh, make sure to explain things specifically, but either way, even if you have some video editing experience, hopefully you can still get stuff out of it as well in terms of the process. So we're gonna be uh, going through the process that we used for MHS Democrats when we did the Youth and Politics series. So for each step, we'll go through what uh, MHS Democrats did. So these are the steps that we followed for the video creation process. So I'll give everyone a second, like if anybody wants to take a picture of it, I'm gonna be going through each specific step, um, but these are the eight steps that we're gonna be focusing on. Um, and later tonight when we have the workshop, we're also gonna be going through these eight steps for making our own video. I'm gonna keep clicking through, but if anyone needs me to come back to the slide at the end, let me know. So the first step we're gonna talk about is picking a concept. So you need to consider your audience when you're doing that and what the purpose of your video is. Um, you wanna make sure that when you pick a concept, you know that as the first thing you're doing so that it can help you figure out the timeline and uh, whatever you're going to be doing for the rest of your videos. So for us, our purpose was to educate voters on the upcoming municipal election through the lens of youth involvement. And so we wanted to focus on issues that we cared about as high schoolers. Um, and so that was a big thing is making sure that what made our form different than like other ones was that it was a focus on um, issues that mattered to youth and uh, having high schoolers being a part of it. And one thing to note, just as I'm going through this, is you'll see this a few different places. Our forum was originally supposed to be in person, but then changed to being a video series online when we moved to distance learning. Uh, this works the same for having just a video series right off the bat, but in case you're wondering, that's why you might see some things that have like an address or things mentioning that it is in person. So this is a quote from one of our um, posts about what our goal of the project would be. Um, so it's basically talking about how we, the election is nonpartisan, so we wanted to, um, we didn't uh, endorse any candidates. That's one thing that was really important is um, knowing our audience, we didn't want to show any, we didn't want to have any biases. So that's one thing that's really important when, if you're doing something like a municipal election, is you don't want to endorse any candidates or else it'll just come off that you're trying to support this one candidate. Although it is different for the 2020 election because obviously we're Democrats, so that's a bit different. Um, but you can see we're talking about um, interviewing about candidates' policies um, and focus on youth involvement. So it's really important to know what your goal is when you're going into it and who your audience is. So for us, it was reaching voters. So the second step is to make a timeline. So you wanna think about if it's for a specific event or a specific election. For us, it was for our municipal election, which was in May, but the election was vote by mail. So basically we had to make sure that what we were doing um, would be ready by the first day that people could vote by mail. Um, so that pushed back our timeline a lot. So originally it would seem like, oh, we can have it out in May, but we actually would need it to come out like about a month earlier because there was such a long time that people could vote by mail and we wanted it to have the biggest impact. So for our timeline, we started in like January, February with the forum and then in March it was moved online and then we posted things in April. Um, so make sure that you have a clear schedule but that you have some flexibility because things will go wrong. That's just the nature of projects. So you wanna have enough time to be able to work on that. Um, so for example, there might be issues with formatting for a video. Um, you wanna have enough time to work on that. So this was our timeline. You can see it changed a bit from our original timeline to our posting schedule. One other thing you should consider when you're working on your timeline is to make sure that you know who's going to be editing um, because they might have specific preferences about how the videos are sent. Um, each editor is gonna need a longer or shorter amount of time than somebody else. So for one person where it might just take 
a couple days to edit, it could take someone a week to edit. So you wanna make sure that you are talking with them so that you have an idea of um, how long you need to give for editing. Also at any point, if you have any questions, like I said, you can put them in the chat. I'll answer some as I go and some at the end. So the third step is writing your script and or questions, depending on what your video or video series is. And your script, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. We just had it as a shared document. Um, if you're writing questions for candidates or you're interviewing an activist, you can use it as a chance for community outreach, which I'll touch upon in just a second. So this was our intro script. You can see we had the main points that we wanted to hit. We wanted to talk about introducing HSDA. Um, Montclair High School Democrats just started this past school year, so not a lot of people knew about us. So we wanted to um, make sure people knew what we were doing, what HSDA is, in case they didn't know, um, explain the video series and that we're changing to online for our forum and explaining the election because we Montclair wasn't used to doing like vote by mail for across the board so we want to explain that and then of course reminding people to vote so this is what we wrote out for our script it didn't take too long to do um, it worked pretty well and then basically we would have each person uh, read off of their script or memorize the script when recording their clips so like I said it doesn't have to be anything crazy you don't have to use like a professional like script software you can just use like a Google Doc so this is how we used um, this as outreach basically we put on the right you can see that for the youth and politics forum now this was back when it was in person but we still had it open for people even when it was online that they could email us or fill out a Google form with any questions that they wanted to ask so this was a way for more people to know that the event was happening and it's a way of having publicity before you're getting to publicity. Um, so for us on the right, you can see this was in the Montclair local, so our local paper. And so people would know about the forum happening even before um, the videos were posted. So the fourth step is to film. Now there are two main options. The first one is to have people film their own clips and then someone edits them together. The second option would be to film on Zoom. So here's a little bit about both of the filming methods for filming separate clips. It's good if you're doing a promo video, if you're trying to share information, but it can be hard because you wanna make sure that everybody films in the same way. For example, let's say everyone's filming horizontally, then if somebody doesn't, then you have to tell them you filmed it wrong and then they have to go back and refilm it and it can be a longer process. Versus on Zoom, if you're interviewing someone and their lighting's really bad, you can just tell them to move. Um, so there's more, you can change things in real time. And Zoom can be harder to edit. For example, if it's on speaker view, I might be speaking, but somebody else is, was just finished speaking and so it's still focusing on them instead of me. So it can be harder to edit and be annoying in that way. One thing that um, has been done before, which I did for In Harmony Montclair, was one person records on Zoom on gallery view and the other person records on speaker view and then you edit them together. But then that gets very complex. So if you're someone here who's a little bit more advanced in um, video editing, then that's something I'd recommend because it comes off very polished. But if you're get, just getting started, I would recommend just doing gallery view or just doing speaker view. And speaker view is better if you're just interviewing one person and gallery view is better if you're having like a group discussion or you're interviewing multiple people. So some tips for filming. Um, you wanna film horizontally, so that's just like filming this way um, versus vertically. And so horizontally is better for YouTube. It's usually better overall just because um, horizontally fills the whole screen on a phone, uh, on a laptop, on the most different devices. Vertically is better though for Instagram TV or TikTok where they favor things being filmed vertically. So you just want to consider what your purpose is and who your target audience is when you're figuring out which way you want to film. You do need to make sure to have good lighting and be aware of any sounds in the background um, because you might not realize that your air conditioning is really loud. So always make sure that you listen to your clip after you record it to make sure that everything sounds good and looks good um, before you send it. And I'll be talking about WeTransfer in a couple minutes, but that's a way that you can transfer files online, but they do have to be sent from a computer or laptop. 
you cannot send files from a phone or a tablet or else you're going to get into some issues. Uh, the other thing is to give specific directions. Um, so if you want it filmed horizontally, make sure everybody knows that. Um, if you want it, everyone's to be 30 seconds or less, make sure to do that. So that's what we did with candidates is we said, you have four minutes, you have eight minutes, like we gave them a time constraint so that um, if they did go over, that's the only time we'd be allowed to edit. And even then we'd be talking to them about it because you don't want to seem like you have any biases and that you're giving three minutes to one person, but eight minutes to another. So that's one thing to consider if you're doing it for candidates or something like that, where you don't want to seem like you have a bias. And then the other thing, I had mentioned it before, is just speaker, speaker view versus gallery view on Zoom. Speaker view is better if you're interviewing one person. Gallery view is better if it's some sort of like group discussion. So in terms of how we filmed for our intro video, which I'll be showing later today, uh, we used separate clips and everybody filmed on their phones and sent it to me and I edited it together. Um, but for candidates, they recorded and they sent separate clips, except for one candidate, which we, who we interviewed on Zoom, and we used speaker view since we were just interviewing her. So the fifth step is to transfer your footage, which can be a very annoying process, but obviously much needed because uh, if 10 people have clips, but they can't get it to you, then you don't have a full video. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can transfer your footage. So for the intro video, we just texted our footage back and forth. And also when we had um, each of our member or each of our board members recording questions, we also had them just like text back and forth because they were only like 30 seconds long, so very short. But if it's any, gonna be anything longer, then I recommend using WeTransfer, which like I said, it's a free website you can use to send files and it's free up to two gigabytes. So I'm gonna show you for just a second what that looks like. So this is WeTransfer. Basically, you just put in whoever you're emailing it to, um, your email, you can put a message if you're saying like, this is my file for the video project for getting out the vote, so they know what it is. Um, and then you can select your file from your desktop. So that's what WeTransfer looks like. And it's free up until two gigabytes. And I found that it's very fast to upload, so that's why I recommend it. But if you're more familiar with something like Google Drive or Dropbox, those also work. So the sixth step is editing. And it's how the whole project comes together. But you don't have to be an experienced editor for it to come together well. So a little bit about some different editing software. iMovie is free on Apple products. So I know a lot of people have Apple products, so that's what I recommend. And later tonight at the workshop, if you don't know how to use iMovie, I am gonna be showing how to use iMovie when we actually edit a video. Um, and even if you're more experienced, you can totally come to the workshop and help people learn more about videos. Uh, and Final Cut and Adobe Premiere are the two industry standards. That's the ones that are the two big uh, different editing software. Uh, but it's gonna be more than you need if you're just getting started with video editing. Uh, I personally use Final Cut. Um, I really like it, but one thing that's really nice is if you start with iMovie, iMovie is very similar to Final Cut. Final Cut is just like the more advanced version. So if you get started on iMovie, then you can learn there and then after you get good at it, you can go and work on Final Cut. But just a disclaimer, Final Cut and Adobe are not free. Final Cut is around like $300, I think. It's, it's expensive, but you can get it for like any Apple devices you have um, that are computers. So that's a little bit about editing software, but if this all seems daunting, just I would recommend iMovie. There are other free editing software for non-Apple products, but iMovie is the one that I'm most familiar with. So now you might not think music is a huge part of videos, but that's kind of what sets the tone for the video. So a few different ways you can have free music. Um, what I did is mixing loops on GarageBand and you can make music there pretty easily and that's free. Um, there's already like music presets on iMovie that you can use and it can be a way to have outreach with your chapter um, so if you know someone who likes writing music, then you can tell them to work on something. Now, if you're working on a series, you should try to have the same intro and outro music and graphics so that it feels cohesive and like it's all a part of the same series. And make sure to give video or music credits 
when you give when you put any music in it even if it says you don't have to it's a good practice to get into so you don't fall into any issues and one thing i'll show you right now this is the youtube audio library and basically how this works is you can look through and you can pick any of these songs and you can see you browse and download music for free and then under it it will say what the conditions are so you're free to use it in any of your songs and um, or any of your videos and you can see this is like 15 minutes long. So you can look through, um, you can pick a mood. So if you know you want it to be bright, then you can put bright and you can get different music there. So that's a really good way to have music for free um, in a very accessible way. And also when you put in music, it doesn't need to be for more than like 15, 20 seconds. Um, it, we're not talking about it being like a huge music undertaking. It's just something to kind of like set the mood at the beginning and the end and for if you're doing a video series for it to feel cohesive. So this is a little bit about our editing process. This is what the intro video looks like on Final Cut. Um, it's going to look a bit different than how it would look in iMovie. And one thing that's really important is after you make the videos to make sure that you review them with other people in your chapter. Uh, what I did is I would edit a video on Final Cut, then we would have a Zoom call, and I would screen share my Final Cut screen and play it for them. So if they're like, oh, I just noticed something here, I could edit it in real time versus sending it and then getting feedback and then having to re-edit. And then one thing here, if you see above each person, um, this is the text above that says their name and their role. These are called chirons, a little trivia there. Um, and so this is basically, since we're not well-known people, you want to put chirons above so then you know who each person is and what their role is. And we also did this for the candidates so that they could differentiate between the two or between the candidates. And also because we're showing so many candidates, it can be hard to keep track of them. And you can see here, this is the music in the intro and outro, um, which was used, uh, I made it on GarageBand using loops. And then we have the little intro and outro graphics, which are the same for all of our videos. So the seventh step is to publish your video. Now you should consider your audience again, because you don't wanna put something that's targeted for an older audience on TikTok. I'm guessing a lot of grandmas aren't on TikTok, so you're not going to reach the most people there. So you want to think about where they're looking for their content and publish your video on there. So these are a few different options for where you could post your videos. Um, like I said, you want to consider your audience, where they look for content, and think about where your chapter already has a following. For us, we already had a following on Instagram, but we actually decided to post it on YouTube for it to be the most accessible. So just because you have the most following on one place doesn't mean you have to post it there, but you should just weigh your options for where your audience is looking for content and where you have a following. And if those coincide, then that answers your question. But if one's more important than the other, then you can post it there. But also don't think that you just have to post one place. What we did is our main videos were published on YouTube, but then we also had like clips on our Instagram. So you can use Instagram or whatever other social media platform to bring viewers over to wherever your main place is that you published. And I've mentioned this, but just make sure to remember the purpose of your video or videos. If your purpose is to educate voters, then you want it in an accessible place for the most voters. If your purpose is to get a message across and for it to go viral, then putting it on Instagram so people can repost it on their stories might make more sense. So just make sure to know your audience, the purpose of your videos and where you already have a following when you're figuring out where you're going to be posting. So I mentioned this a bit already, but for our strategy, our target audience was voters and we didn't have a following on YouTube, but it made sense because that's where our target audience could uh, access videos most easily. Also, one thing to consider if you do a video and then you do another video project, try to use the same platform so you can continue to build that platform. For example, we got subscribers because of our series. So if we posted another series, we'd most likely also do it on YouTube because we already have a following. And that's something that we've also been doing for In Harmony Montclair. For the Harmony concert, we're posting videos ahead of time because our show is gonna be streamed on YouTube. So we're gaining subscribers before our big event so that when our big event comes, people will already be following it and we'll see it. 
So the eighth step is publicity, and this is where it all comes together. So you have your video, you have it up, but now you need to get people to see it. So you want to build momentum in as many ways as possible. Um, think about where people who are, who are your target audience are going to be looking for information. For us, a lot of people go on Facebook groups in Montclair. So we posted in some Facebook groups to encourage community members to take a look. You can also post on your own social media, um, emailing friends and family. What we did is we also emailed teachers so that any of our high school teachers would also know about it. Um, so then it can spread from there. And uh, digital word of mouth is something that's really important. So you, that could be emailing, that could be posting on your story, and then more people posting from there. Um, even texting people and saying, hey, I just made this video project, if you can check it out. Just make sure you can reach your audience in as many ways as possible. And also a big thing is reaching out to your local newspaper, local media, and you don't have to do anything crazy. If you just email them with key information, that's usually enough for them to at least know about it happening. And then if they need more information from there, at least then you have that contact made. So these are two examples of what we had for publicity. So on the right, you can see this is our local paper, the Montclair Local, and they did an interview with us on Zoom, and we had like that article, and then it's also um, online, so that was really helpful. And then on the left is Baristanet, and they also um, posted about our video series. And one thing that was really helpful if you're able to have your local paper do that, if they're also online, is they linked to one of our videos. And our most viewed video was the one that was attached to their article. So that's one thing that's really great is if you can get other groups to link to it, then that helps drive viewers over to your page. So I'm going to show you guys the intro video. Just so you know, the audio is not going to be good because of Zoom. Zoom audio quality is really bad, but it, I will put the link to our channel in the chat box. So if you want to see it on your own time with the good audio and visuals and everything, I highly recommend that. It won't be the same quality through Zoom, but at least you can see how it came together. Executive Board of Montclair High School Democrats. Montclair High School Democrats is a chapter of High School Democrats of America, the high school organization of the Democratic Party. While we are affiliated with the Democratic Party, municipal elections are nonpartisan. We have not endorsed any candidate in order to allow you, the viewers of this series, to develop opinions, the most objective portrays of each candidate. This year, the state of New Jersey will be using a vote by mail procedure to run municipal elections to maintain physical distance in the big coronavirus outbreak. Voting for the Montclair Municipal Elections will take place from April 21st to May 12th. Our club has been working diligently over the past couple of months to prepare for this project. We have spent time creating questions that we hope accurately reflect the hopes, theories, desires, and concerns for our greater Montclair community. Every single member of the Montclair High School Democrats deserves credit for all of the hard work they've put into this project. Our goal with this video series is to help you, the Montclair community, learn more about the candidates for municipal office. With the importance of youth involvement in politics in mind, we will be asking the candidates various questions about their policy positions on issues relevant to Montclair, such as affordable housing, climate change, and the COVID-19 pandemic, among other topics. We will be releasing videos ahead of the election. This year, the municipal election will be done through vote by mail ballots. Voting will start on April 21st and end May 12th. We hope that these videos will serve as a way for you to learn more about the candidates and make an educated decision on who you would like to vote for this election. During this uncertain time, the most important thing is to make your voice heard. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. So as you can see, it's not the best audio quality on Zoom, but that gives you an idea of how the intro video came together. And one thing was that's how we got started. And then we worked on improving video quality throughout the series. Um, so working on things like making sure that we're not uh, backlit, that we have the lighting the right way, that we listen for any background noises. So it's okay for if your video isn't perfect, it doesn't need to be perfect to go up. 
um, just make sure that it's a learning process and you learn as you keep going. So I'm going to be showing you a few clips from our counselor at large video, um, but because you're not going to be able to hear it that well, I'm going to just be talking you through a bit of some of the thinking that we had behind how the video was made. So you can see here we had the same intro um, so that it feels cohesive. And then at the beginning of each video, we had the names of all of the candidates so that people would know who they were about to see. So I'm just gonna pause here for a second. One thing that we did is we decided to organize our videos by question instead of by candidate. We thought that that would be a fair way to make sure that we don't give um, we don't give any candidate more time and that you don't see one candidate before others. So that was a good way of making sure that um, we were being fair. And so this is another example of how we had board members recording each of the questions that were being asked as a way to get people to participate and also to make sure that people saw that the focus was on youth and politics, and it wasn't just about the candidates, it was about youth involvement as well. A few years ago, it's always been a passion of mine. I consider myself an eco warrior. So obviously you can see the focus is on the candidates, but we wanted to make sure that people remember that it's youth behind the scenes. So that was one thing that we thought worked well for the candidate videos, was having us ask the questions and having us um, being the ones who are recording the questions. And one thing that helps editing wise is that we made sure that, um, let's say one person recorded a question about COVID-19, any candidates that answered the COVID-19 question would have that same clip beforehand. So if I recorded a question asking about COVID-19 and the first ward and second ward candidates both answered that question, that video clip could be used for both videos. So it made it easier that we didn't have a million clips running around. We had a few clips that we could use for the questions that were being asked across the board. And you can see we had the same little outro here, um, made sure to connect to the next video. And you can see here with the thumbnail, it's the same um, background. Um, so we have the same intro for all of the videos so that it feels cohesive. So this is a sample schedule. Now, I know a lot of people might be thinking of doing a video possibly for something with the 2020 election. So this is a schedule for um, having like a register to vote video campaign. That's just an example I'm gonna use. So I'm using New Jersey since that's where I live and you have to register to vote in New Jersey by October 13th. So we need it, we would need the video to come out before that and we would need to give people enough time to find it, enough time for publicity. So we had to work backward for this sample video project. Uh, so basically, when, once we did that, this is a kind of a sample video project you could go by, which would be in August, um, working on the timeline, figuring out who's editing, working on the script, late August filming, so that in September you're able to edit and start publicizing. So even if you're thinking of something in November, you should start uh, like planning it in July and August, because it takes longer to get all the videos together than you might think. Another thing is it depends on if you're doing a video or a video series. It takes less time for a video, obviously, than a video series. But for a video series, you would need to think about, are you posting one video every day and you're going to do that for a week? Or are you going to post one video each week for a few weeks? And that also would change your timeline. So this is a good timeline for something that would also give you enough wiggle room in case there are any issues. Um, in case anybody wasn't able to send their video in the right format, for example. So this is like a sample timeline that you could use. Um, if anyone wants to take a picture of it, feel free. I'll leave it up there for just a second um, if anyone wants a picture of it. And then I can also bring it back up at the end if anybody needs. Um, but basically when you're thinking about videos, you wanna make sure that you give yourself enough time for that if something doesn't go right, you can fix it and still stay on schedule while still being flexible about it. And especially if you're just getting started, um, you wanna give yourself more time than you think because if you're ahead of schedule, that's great. Um, but if you're behind schedule, you wanna be able to have that time. 
And if you haven't used iMovie before, um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube with tutorials. So it's very user friendly as well. It's easy to just drag things in and use a lot of presets if you don't have any experience. Um, but later tonight, I'll also be showing a brief demo about how to use iMovie if you kind of want to get started. So now I'll take, if anybody has any questions about anything, um, it can be about video editing, video software, anything like that. Um, so if you wanna put any questions you have in, into the chat box, I'll give it a second if anybody has any questions. And in the meantime, I'll put the schedule back up in case anybody wants a picture of that. Does anyone have any questions about videos, video editing, anything about that? Okay, okay, it's a great question. So uh, how long do you think it will take to get a good level of proficiency? Um, I'm guessing you mean like in terms of like video editing? Um, so basically for video editing, it kind of depends on the person. Um, to do basic iMovie, it doesn't take too long to um, kind of figure it out because you can use a lot of presets. When you go into iMovie, you can also pick a theme and it'll like do a lot of things for you. Um, so doing that doesn't really take long to figure out. It would only probably take like a week or two to understand like the basic themes. But if you would really want to get deep into iMovie, um, I mean, if you do it consistently, I would give yourself like a month or two. It doesn't really take too much to delve into iMovie. Um, if you just want enough, like if you want enough proficiency to edit a video project like this, just working on iMovie for like a couple of weeks and checking out some tutorials and stuff should be enough to kind of get you at least a proficient enough to be able to work on a video project. Um, for a little backstory for like how long it took for me for video editing, um, I started video editing in like fourth grade with iMovie and I was using like my, like my uh, iPod touch, like that's how long ago it was. And so I was using like my iPod touch and then I started using Final Cut in like fourth, fifth grade. Um, and so it took, it takes longer for Final Cut, but for iMovie, it took me like a year to be like really good at it, but it doesn't take long to get good enough at it to be able to do video projects like this. Okay. How big or small should your video team, uh, video creating team be for max efficiency slash convenience? So basically for us, what we did is our club is like around 15 to 20 people and we brainstormed questions as a chapter. And so we broke into groups and brainstormed questions so that as many people were involved as possible. And then for the actual video creating team, it was board members just because that's what happened with distance learning. Um, so we had, the, we had board members recording clips and then like I edited them and published them. So I would say around like five people. Um, it also depends who's editing. So I think the main things, you want someone coordinating the project, you want someone editing the project. Um, and when I mean coordinating, that would also mean like talking to candidates. And then you want a few people, um, you want someone doing publicity um, and posting on your social media. Uh, which could be two different people, like one could be emailing people, like uh, teachers, and then someone else could be like on social media posting. Um, I did a few of those tasks, but I think it's best done with like five people because with the board, like we all put in a lot of work and I would say like around four to five different people so that no one has too much of a brunt of work um, is a good way to have a video creating team. And then also if it's something like publicity or something like social media, making sure that you have other people in your chapter also helping with that so that more people um, are getting involved is a good idea. But I would say like four to five people um, is a good kind of like base to have at the center of the project. Are there any other questions? I can ask anything? Yeah, yeah I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so what would you say is like your next project? 
So in terms of stuff for Montclair High School Dems, um, we're planning on doing like a get out the vote campaign in the fall, um, which will probably include videos because um, that's always something that I'm into. So yeah, um, we're going to be doing like get out the vote campaign, like registering to vote, like uh, registering people to vote, that kind of stuff, and then using like videos as a way to do that. Um, because we don't know what it's going to look like in September and who's going to be in school. Um, so videos are a great way to kind of do that, especially leading up to the 2020 election. If anyone has any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat and then one thing I'll just mention um, is that tonight we have a workshop. Um, we're going to be going through this whole process to actually like work on a short video um, having to do with the summit. Um, so if you kind of want to like get a little experience learning about it um, and looking at iMovie, if you haven't before, uh, we're going to have that tonight at 7 p.m. So if no one else has any questions, um, this is just the credits for the slides. Uh, if you are looking for something good for making slides, I recommend Slides Carnival. It works well um, for video or for um, presentations. And this is that's what how all the design for this worked. Um, and then if you want to reach out to Mako High School Dems at all, um, this is our YouTube channel. I also put the link in the chat box. Um, I'm going to put my email in the chat box if you have any questions about anything specifically with um, with video editing, with anything, with the um, creating a video series, let me know. Um, I've experience with iMovie and Final Cut primarily, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Or if you make a series, please email me and let me know so I can see it. Um, and you can also connect uh, with me through our Instagram and just like DM and they can connect us. So. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'll stay around for a second. If not, have a great rest of your day, and we will have a workshop later tonight for anyone interested. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.